And listen, it's a typical thing to feel the indifference, to feel the impassiveness, to feel like there's no way to win the game. And then all of a sudden, it's that slow resignation and that acceptance of defeat. We start to say, you know what? Instead of going for excellence, we're going to settle for mediocrity because that's exactly what's being fed to us. And that's the time where you have to stand your ground. That's the time when you have to have the courage and the strength and the character to step up and recognize and realize that your vision is bigger and stronger than all of those forces that are perceived to be coming against you. Instead of thinking that there's forces against you, start finding the force within that internal power. That's what's going to be necessary for you to fight back against this thing and not allow apathy to pull you under and win the game and cause you to fall to defeat. What's up, my friends? JT DeBolt here with you today for the True Driven Podcast, the podcast for the few, the true, the driven, those remarkable people who we call the true driven. And I say good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, whatever time it is for you, no matter where you might be tuning in from on the Big Blue Marble. Thanks for joining me here as always. Appreciate you guys. Stay in tuned for the True Driven Podcast. So very important that we unite, stay together, and share this message. So if you want to be the first to know and stay in the know, Make sure that you subscribe to us here on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash JT DeBolt. You can also follow me on Instagram and all the other social channels. This is going to be the primary place where you can find the full message. And I just want to say first and foremost how much I appreciate you guys supporting the podcast, supporting the show, leaving the comments and doing all that stuff. But more important than just that is actually embodying and living the true driven principles that we talk about. Because now more than ever, we need more people like you, like me, like us, to unite, go shoulder to shoulder, and rise up and start living that life of personal excellence through personal leadership. That's what we talk a lot about here on the True Driven Podcast. It's one of the most vital things that we can contribute to the world around us. Right now, we're kind of in a world of a society that is mostly geared towards consumerism. And by consumerism, what I mean is the default behavior is to find some way to tune out, to medicate, and to not give back to the world around it. You see a lot of people right now whose default behavior is to take and to receive. And while It's important to be able to take and receive at the appropriate times. The true driven leader knows that our default behavior is to want to give back, to improve, to grow, and to continue to push the edge of the envelope, right? And so I share this with you because if you're feeling a little bit like, hey, I feel like I'm in this battle by myself. I feel like I'm fighting this thing. You are not alone at all. If you think I'm fighting this thing by myself, you're not alone by you're not fighting this fight by yourself. And it sometimes feels that way. And so the entire point for me asking you and encouraging you to share this message with other people far and wide is because there are lots of people just like you and me who need that message to know that we are not alone, that we are, in fact, surrounded by one another people who think similar to us, not think identically alike because we don't want that either. But people who have a dedication to improving themselves each and every single day, improving themselves in the aspects of life that make a big difference. And if you're on that mission to create the best life you can, to create the best version of yourself that you can, and to help others to do the same, then you're going to need the alignment with other people to help you get there. The thing we're going to be talking about today is, I don't even want to call it a phenomenon. I just want to call it something that is part of the human existence. And it's something that comes up a lot, especially for high achievers and those true driven leaders out there that are pushing themselves to be the best version of themselves on the daily basis. Because you know That excellence, personal excellence, is not a destination. It's not a train station you pull into. 
It's not an airport that you arrive at. It's not a port of call that you uh, pull into. Your ship doesn't just pull into some port of call called excellence. That's not how it works. That'd be nice, but the danger to that is you arrive and then what? End of the journey. Personal excellence doesn't work that way, thankfully. And for some of you, that's a relief. For others, it probably feels like an abrasive death, like somebody's dragging you behind a car going down a dirt road. But here's the reality. The sooner you can grip the idea that success is not a destination, is an ever-long, lifetime-challenging pursuit that we push ourselves to follow on a con- continual daily basis, the more rewarding it actually becomes. And the more you avoid the trap of what we're going to be talking about today. The topic we're talking about today is apathy. How to overcome apathy and find that sense of purpose within. And one of the most important things that you can do for yourself from a personal leadership standpoint is have the ability to pull yourself away from times where you feel disheartened, when you feel discouraged, when you start to feel that impassiveness, that almost lack of emotion. It's almost like you're being bled out. That's what it feels like spiritually. It feels like somebody came up behind you, deceptively snuck that blade between your ribs, and it's that slow bleeding of the soul. That's what apathy feels like. If you're a leader, if you've got people who count on you, if results are not just important but critical for you, then you probably have felt this from time to time. It's that feeling like you're climbing a mountain and each step you take, the mountain gets steeper and steeper and steeper. You might be climbing through mud or snow or other kind of debris and it seems that it's getting deeper and slicker, slipperier, whatever, you know, and the sense that your footing is starting to erode with each step. Two steps forward, one step back, pretty soon, pretty soon becomes two steps forward, two steps back two steps forward, three steps back, and so on. Or so it feels. It feels like you're lost in the tide, swimming against the stream, the current, expending so much energy, not just the physical energy, but the mental energy, the spiritual energy, the energy of the soul. And pretty soon, there's only so long any of us can take that if we don't have the way to readdress that refuel that give ourselves the break the pause the ability to get back on track if we don't that disappointment of life that feeling of there's just no way to win starts to invade our inner consciousness and we start to think it's not worth it anymore I've seen too many great people on the mission of their lives. And because it's actually a mission and not some goal, not something that they're just, you know, sort of chasing like a hobby. I'm talking about somebody who has committed to a mission. Something where that higher level of commitment to something more challenging, bigger than themselves, possibly, potentially, and likely bigger than anything they've done in the, in the past is now interfacing with the reality of this is going to take a while. And sometimes we're not going to get fed back that sense that we're on the right path. Sometimes you get no feedback at all, which is terrifying. Look, think of it this way. Like imagine you're working towards something big. Maybe you're building a business. Maybe you are uh, building a team. Maybe you're working yourself back into fantastic shape but you're not seeing the results. Not only are you not seeing the results, but you're not getting any sense that what you're doing is even moving you in the direction that you want to go. If we cannot find a sense of importance to that and a sense of value to that, pretty soon the self-doubt starts to creep in. I don't care how mentally tough you are. The most mentally tough people that you can think of right now, whether it's Chad Wright, David Goggins, you name all these guys, Jocko, you know, folks that that epitomize mental toughness. Anybody like that. And I'm not just talking about dudes and there's plenty of women out there that, that embody mental toughness as well. 
But what I'm talking about is those folks still have those experiences where they're like, dude, I'm hitting the end of my gas tank. The self-doubt does creep in. And pretty soon there's a sense that is it even worth it to stay in the game? If we're not careful, apathy starts to knock at the front door. And the knock becomes gentle at first, but then it increases in intensity. It increases in frequency to the point where it cannot be ignored. And if we're not careful, we can give in to that apathy. What is apathy? I mean, you can look up the definition for apathy, but in essence, it's that, it's that sense of impassivity. Like, I'm just not going to do this anymore. You start to lose the emotional connection to what you are doing. It's not that you lose all emotion altogether. I mean, to be completely apathetic towards life is terrifying because you're pretty much close to the end at that point. Sometimes apathy can be called and look like depression, anxiety, and all these other things. Of course, they can be synonymous, but apathy on the level of performance, like when you're on the mission, when you're out there trying to do something that's significant, something that matters, something that matters to you. If apathy shows up, that's the most terrifying moment in the world because that that one single ingredient added to the recipe of life, added to the recipe of success, added to the recipe of excellence is sometimes the thing that will poison the entire dish. We have to be super careful because apathy is the kind of thing that slowly creeps in. You don't just wake up one day on top of the world and then by noon you're apathetic. It would take a pretty dramatic thing to change those events. You would have to be able to step back and say, wow, that was a pretty dramatic thing that happened to me to take you off course that dramatically, that quickly. No, no. Apathy is a slow death. Apathy is that carbon monoxide coming out of the tailpipe. It's the thing that puts you to sleep before you actually die. And that's the sad part. Because you don't always die a physical death, but you might die a spiritual death. You might die an emotional death. You might die the death of your true identity of who you really are, what you were brought here to do, who you were brought here to be. So we're going to talk about that. If you've ever experienced this, and I have, you know how terrifying apathy can be. I remember working really, really hard on my career, coming up out of the U.S. Navy and bootstrapping with no business background, no business education, but bootstrapping an entrepreneurial career, not knowing the first thing about real estate or how to invest, but going into it anyway, not knowing the first thing about, you know, basic finance, basic business principles, and then falling completely apart, losing everything. And then turning around and trying to take what little finances, what very little income I had left and putting it into something else and then building that and having it crash and then building the next thing and having that crash. It felt like failure after failure after failure. And for all you entrepreneurs out there, you've likely, if you've been on the path long enough, you've experienced this, right? There was a point where I started to realize, I don't know that I can do this anymore. I remember one specific evening going out on a mountain bike ride. I told my wife, I'll be back. I'm just going to leave. I'll be back whenever I get back. And it was an evenings after dinner, that type of thing, summertime. And I go for a ride and I'm all by myself, which was odd because usually there are people out there on the trails, especially in the evening, things cool off. And I'm up there, I'm by myself. And I had this like quiet moment. And I thought, you know what? I don't have anything going for me. I have no prospects. (laughs) College educated, combat decorated Navy pilot. I can barely feed my family. And I'm at the end of my, my rope as a business owner. I'm at the end of my rope as an entrepreneur. I've tried everything I know how to do. What's the point? I don't have life insurance. And then it occurred to me. Actually, I get a $25,000 life insurance policy from the VA, the Veterans Administration. If I die right now, I'm more valuable dead than I would be alive. That's what I felt. 
you've reached the depths of despair when you're feeling apathy. Now, I'm not going to get too much into that part of that story other than to say that when I tell you I have felt apathy, I understand. So if you've ever felt it, I understand that aspect as deeply as I can without knowing you and knowing your situation. What I can tell you is that there's a way out. And what I will tell you is you must find that way out. Right now, more than ever, there are plenty of forces working against us. All of us that want to lead, all of us that want to make an impact, all of us that want to create a better way forward for ourselves, for our families, for our communities, for our country, for the world. It feels like the forces of evil, the forces of you name it, the universe, whatever, is working against us. You may feel that they're working directly against you. It may actually feel deeply personal to you. You might think there's no hope for this. It feels like everything that gets better gets worse right afterwards. If you feel that way, I need you to stop for two seconds and listen to me. Because that's exactly what the fuck those people want you to think. That's exactly what those fucking monsters want you to believe. They're tyrants. They are not good people. But here's the thing. You can't have good without evil, all right? So let's just be honest. There are some really awful evil people in the world. And to believe otherwise is a Pollyanna fucking, you know, rose-colored glass approach to life. Those of us who have been around the block seen some pretty evil shit in the world and other parts of the, uh, of the globe, understand, oh yeah, it's actually fucking really here. But here's the reality. We don't have to fucking accept that. The true change is not going to start outside of us until it begins within us. So if, if there's any given time where you are feeling like giving in to this notion that it's not worth the fight, that it's better to just surrender and accept if you're one of those people that's feeling like, dude, I just don't even know if it's worth it anymore, then I really need you to hear me right now. The thing is, is that it feels like surrender. You Like, the best way I can describe it. You feel like the only way to surrender is this hopelessness. It's this crushing feeling like everything weighs so much and that you don't have that power to get past that. That's what apathy is like. And you might know people like this, by the way. Maybe you're not apathetic, but you know people and you, you care deeply about them. That's the reason that they need to either hear this message or have you convey it to them. Because right now, it also might look like things that people call clinical depression. It might look like anxiety. And by no means am I trying to interfere with any kind of thing like that. But I want to be clear on this. No matter what it's called, at its root... There is that surrender and that release of your personal power where you say, I can't do this anymore. But if you can hang in there just one more second, if you can hang in there for just one more minute, if you can hang in for one more hour, one more day, one more week, then you have a real shot at getting your footing, getting traction and building that power back and pushing against those forces. What does it take? Number one, if you've ever heard me talk about this, you can go back to the previous podcast episode. I talked all about the big four, your values, your vision, your mission, and your purpose. Number one, you have to be connected to your values. Those are not just your grounding principles, but they are your guiding principles. They become your North Star. Your ability to say, this is not the life that I had thought for myself. This is not what I wanted to provide for my family. This is not the impact I wanted to make on the world around me, whether it's your community or the entire globe. The contributions that you're here to make are predicated on the clarity that you have and the commitment that you have to your values, your core values, your driving principles of who you are and the type of person that you are here to be. So if you're feeling that sense of apathy, if you're feeling that sense of fuck it, it's not worth it anymore, your very first step to get out of it, and it might be the only step you need, is to get clear on and commit to or to re-clarify and recommit to your values. Period. End of story. 
Next, once you've done that, the next step is you want to get clear and get back in tune with that vision that you have for your life, that overarching focus that you have for what you're here to build, what you're here to achieve, and the impact that you intend for that to make on the world around you. That's what your vision is. And the beautiful part is, look, your vision is going to take a lifetime. So if you're like, well, I haven't quite realized my vision yet, and that's part of the reason I'm starting to feel like, fuck it, I want you to understand that that is actually part of the process. You're not supposed to realize your vision on day two or three or four. It's a lifelong journey, my friend. Your mission, that's a different thing. And that's actually step three, is to be on a mission. Your mission is much more short term. If you've heard the podcast on the big four, you already know this. Your mission is that short term thing that you're committed to. It's a mission. It's not a goal. It's a much higher level of commitment. It requires all of you. There is an all in, no way out, full commitment when it's a mission. When it's a goal, you have all kinds of ways you can negotiate your way out of it. You could say, hey, listen, it's getting hard. I'm getting tired. This isn't working out. Hey, maybe it wasn't meant to be. But those are all lubricants down the path of apathy down the path to mediocrity. Apathy is simply that drug that lulls you to sleep and puts you to bed in the bed of mediocrity. You got to say no to that. You got to push back against that shit. And the reason I say that is because when you have some sense of what your vision is for your life, but you're very, very clear on the mission and the mission helps uh, uh, realize that vision, it helps to bring that vision to life. Now you've got something that will keep you on the path. If it's just a goal, then it's negotiable. You might get yourself out of it. You might be able to re, you know, kind of reassess it. You might be able to renegotiate with yourself and say, maybe next time. But a mission is non-negotiable. You don't just one day wake up and go, well, I think I'm going to do this. No, no, no. You've got to slow down and assess the components of the mission and talk to yourself in terms of the affirmative. I am on the path to this mission. Each day I work toward this. Currently I am working on this. That's how you know you're on a mission. If it's just a goal, then you achieve the goal and then you move on to the next thing. You can have, by the way, not to totally throw goals out the window, you can have little goals that help you accomplish the mission. It's almost like milestones on a big flight plan to success. The thing you have to get to, though, is you have to understand the mission is the thing that drives you on a daily basis. The mission is the thing that fuels you and gives you somewhere to apply your sense of purpose, which is step four. If you're feeling apathetic, it's likely because you've lost that sense of purpose. And I'm not talking about purpose as a noun, as a thing. Like you got to find your purpose. You got to be on your purpose. But what I am saying is you need to be on purpose. You have to have a sense of purpose. And a sense of purpose is a way of being. It's an attitude. It's a posture. It's the way you show up. Like you can tell when somebody's on purpose. You can tell when somebody is locked in. When they're tuned up, dialed in, and ready to rock, that person's on purpose. And it doesn't matter. Look, you could be on purpose doing the dishes, right? You could be on purpose mowing the lawn. But you better damn well be on purpose when you're building your career, when you're building your business, when you're leading people, when you're leading yourself. And so if apathy has showed up and sat on your lap, and seduced you into thinking that it's going to take care of you and that it's better to just back up and play small, you better slap that ass and get it the fuck off your lap. Because here's the thing. Apathy is always going to lie to you. Apathy is the thing that's going to keep you stuck. It's going to lull you into a sense of comfort, almost a sleepy, drowsy sense of comfort. Well, at least I don't have to put out energy anymore. Energy that's not going to return to me. Commitment that's not going to pay off. Effort that's not going to go somewhere. That's what apathy wants you to believe. But the truth, the reality is, is that it is simply trying to pull you further and further away from who you truly are and what you're truly here 
to do. The fight back is to remind yourself what your values are and ask, are you living in alignment with, in accordance with your values? Are you clear on and working toward on a continual daily basis, the vision that you have for your life? Are you currently plugged into and working with a mission, a mission that does have a start and end time. It's more finite than vision, but it fuels the vision. Maybe your mission right now is to build a million dollar business. Maybe your mission right now is to build a mission is to build a, uh, uh, a nonprofit to give back. I don't know what it is for you but you have to decide what that is. Once it's accomplished, then you start a new mission and that mission fuels the vision and the next one after that fuels the vision and overall your life becomes fulfilling, becomes something that you look at and say that was worthwhile. And when you do that, when you operate from that place, there is no room for apathy. There's no room for fear. There is no room for you to step back and allow mediocrity to take root in your life. Values, vision, mission, and purpose. Those are the four things that get you out of apathy. And there's one more bonus to all of this because you could be clear on these things, but one thing that will absolutely lock this in and make it bulletproof is is the following. If you have a true sense that what you are doing is bigger than you, that you benefit from it for sure, obviously. You build a million dollar business, you're probably gonna benefit from it, right? Or a multi-million dollar brand, you're probably gonna benefit from it. But it's gotta be bigger than that. It's gotta be bigger than you. When that happens, then you can do amazing things. One thing that's key and essential to this entire formula, being clear on your values, being clear on your vision, being clear on your mission, having a sense of purpose of it, and then, of course, making sure that it's bigger than you. It's something that's much bigger than, something that you can commit to and give back to, something more than just your own well-being and your own you know, uh, reward, is to know that you can align with other people. Guys, I'm saying this all the time to you. I say this constantly because I fucking care. You are not on this path alone. None of us are. It feels like it. That's what they want you to feel. They want you to feel that you're in this by yourself. They want you to feel that it's an unwinnable game. They want to take away that sense of purpose. They want to take away the idea that your mission is irrelevant. They want to take away the idea that your vision will never come true. They want to convince you that your values are wrong, that they're evil, that they're selfish. And I'm here to tell you that is not the case. But if you keep listening to that and standing alone, you will likely fall. Not to say you're not strong enough, not to make you out to be weak or incapable. But what I am saying is that there are power in numbers. So we as that true driven tribe have to continue to build and grow and stay strong together. That's my call to action. Share the message far and wide. Share it with people that you want to be in your tribe, to be in your squadron, to fly in your formation so that we can all fly higher, faster, and farther together. But in order for that to happen, you got to stay in the game. Don't surrender to apathy. Stay strong, stay focused, stay committed, and stay driven. That is what's going to win the game. All right, my friends, that does it for this episode of the True Driven Podcast. We'll be bringing more podcasts to you soon. Stay tuned for this. Make sure you're subscribing here on YouTube, subscribing to Spotify, iTunes, Apple Podcasts. And remember, no matter what course you fly in life, fly high, fly fast, fly far, stay driven. Stay driven.